What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm down at Benson Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram and we're going to take a look at this 2019 Dodge Charger RT Scat Pack Plus. Huge thanks to them for providing this car for me today. I will have all of their information in the description below. This model is finished off in B5 blue and it has an MSRP just under $46,000. Under the hood is a 6.4 liter SRT Hemi V8 engine. This is paired to the 8-speed automatic with steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. This engine produces 485 horsepower at 6100 RPM and 475 pound-feet of torque at 4100 RPM. It is rear wheel drive, weighs around 4,200 pounds, zero to 60 can happen in around four and a half seconds, and it has a top speed of 175 miles an hour. And with a fuel capacity of 18 and a half gallons, you can expect to see 15 miles per gallon in the city and 24 on the highway. The wheelbase measures 120.2 inches. It has an overall length of 200.8. The width is 75, and it has a height of 58.2 inches. Starting up front with the black grille, you can see the Scat Pack badge on the right side along with two functional air inlets to provide maximum cooling to the engine. The cutouts in the grille both in the upper and lower section will help in providing more airflow as well. This has projector beam halogen daytime running lights along with LED headlights. There's fog lights in the lower section of the bumper. There's great contours running throughout the bumper as well. As we make our way up to the hood, you can see a functional air inlet again to provide even more cooling to the engine and it just gives it a very aggressive appearance from the front. Moving to the side, this features a set of 20 by 9.5 inch black forged wheels. Four wheel disc brakes are in all four corners. The rotors up front measure 14.2 inches and 13.8 inches in the rear. Brembo brakes are also all around. It has six piston front calipers and single piston rear calipers. The body colored side mirrors are power folding and heated. This has a sport tuned suspension. You can see a very distinctive line running throughout the door. It actually starts at the tail light runs above both door handles through the middle of the driver door and then back towards the rear tire. This has black window trim and up top features a sunroof. And finishing up in the rear with the large trunk mounted spoiler, this has LED taillights with a nice connecting bar running through the middle section of the trunk. It features a backup camera with four parking sensors. You can see the Scat Pack badge on the right side of the trunk. This has more vents on each side of the bumper to help with aerodynamics and down below is the dual stainless steel exhaust. So there's a look at the exterior of the 2019 Charger Scat Pack Plus. This is actually the first time I've ever checked out a Charger like this in person, and I really like it. The side proportions are great, especially with the set of wheels that this particular model has on it. And then making our way to the front has a really aggressive appearance with a lot of functional air vents. It's really nice to see that they are all indeed functional, especially the one on the hood. But now with the key, we'll go ahead and check out the interior. Before we hop in, as long as I have the vehicle locked, we can double tap this button and it will automatically start up. And then obviously if we just double tap on it, it will shut it off. But now with the vehicle locked and the key on me, I'll just place my hand on the door handle. You'll hear it automatically unlock. Moving on to the door panel, you can see it's covered in black leather. It's along the armrest, on the back side and even up top and features nice gray stitching running along all of it. You have a brushed aluminum release handle in front of that along with two memory seat adjustments. The front windows are automatic up and down. You have all of your side mirror adjustments in front of that. This features a six speaker Alpine sound system. You have a ton of storage space in the lower section of the door along with the fuel cap release. Moving inside now, we'll take a look at the sport bucket seats. They're finished off in Napa leather and Alcantara running down the middle section. You can see the Scat Pack logo right in the center. Beautiful stitching runs down the aggressive bolsters. They also have an eight-way power adjustability with four-way power lumbar support, and they are heated and ventilated. Once inside, we're greeted with a fully wrapped black leather steering wheel. It has black stitching running along the inside. Nice perforated leather to the left and the right. On the right side, we have all of the cruise control buttons. On the left side, you have your Bluetooth and voice commands, and all of these will control the center gauge screen. On the left side is the tack. You have the speedometer on the right side. Fuel and engine temperature are in the middle, along with your gear selection on the top right. Using those buttons on the left side of the steering wheel, we can scroll through and look at your PSI and your tires, along with some other vital information like oil pressure, oil life. We can scroll down to performance. You can see your zero to 60 timer, along with zero to 100. You have a few other timers as well, along with your G-force meter, lap timer, lap history, and top speed. You can scroll down to fuel economy and look at your averages, along with your trip information. You have your audio, your messages, 
along with your screen setup. Just going into it, we can configure that upper left or upper right corner along with the current gear that you're in. You can display your gear and change that as well along with the center screen up in the top. Once out of that, we can go to screen warning and check any diagnostics with the vehicle. This also has these steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. They just take up the top portion here. Down below you have more hands-free controls on each side. They will control your radio, volume, and turning it on and off. And then looking at the engine start stop button, it's off to the right here. So with my foot on the brake, we'll go ahead and start it up. On the left side of the steering wheel, we have the trunk release along with some dimmer switches for the gauges. You have your headlight controls along with the fog light controls. There's one air vent with a nice trim piece running around it. The entire dash is covered in more leather with nice stitching running along the edge. And then right in the center is the 8.4 inch screen. At the bottom, you have all of the presets. It's on radio right now. We can go into media. You have all of your climate controls. This does have a dual zone climate system up front. You can sync those together. You have the heated and ventilated seats again, so you can control all of those along with the heated steering wheel. You also have where you'd like the air to go in the middle here just by clicking on each picture and then you have some more controls on the top section. Fan speed is down in the center. You can either click on the number of what you'd like or just clicking on the fan itself. In the center you have an apps button that will take you to a lot of different settings. You have SRT mode that you can go into and configure your transmission, the shifters, your traction control and steering. You can put it into track mode. You have sport mode or a custom mode. You can go into each one and configure it separately. One thing that's really cool with this system too, if there's an app that you use a lot, let's say SRT mode, you're taking this out on the track or you're daily driving it a lot, you can drag and drop this to the bottom. So if it's something that you use a lot again, you have easy access to it. You can quickly go in and change everything that you'd like. On each side of that screen, we have an air vent along with more of that trim piece, giving it a really nice look. Down below, you have your volume and power for the radio along with tuning. There's also a mute button, your hazards. You can turn the screen on and off if you'd like. Beneath those, we have driving mode, so just clicking on that will bring you to the screen I already showed. You have launch control, which is currently unavailable. The vehicle does need to be broken in for that to activate. You can turn on and off the parking sensors along with traction control. Underneath all of those, we have actual AC buttons. So you have the fan speed right in the center that you can adjust, your temperature for driver and passenger, along with some more recirc buttons. Right in the center here is another little cubby storage pocket along with a 12 volt. And then looking at the leather wrap shifter, if we just go ahead and pull the trigger on the left side, we can put it into reverse. You'll see the backup camera light up. Going back to the shifter now, we can go all the way down into drive, pop it over into manual mode so we can shift using this or on the steering wheel itself, and then we can put it all the way back into park. To the right of the shifter, you have some more storage space, and then right in the middle, if we retract this, that gives you two cup holders and a little slot in the middle for a phone or something thin like that. Looking at the center armrest now, it's covered in more leather and stitching. If we go ahead and open this up, you'll see there's a removable tray here, so if you take that out, there's a 12 volt down in the bottom along with two USBs and an auxiliary port. So you definitely have plenty of room for anything that you need there. Looking at the glove box now, there's a storage shelf up top so you can divide this into two, gives you a little bit more room. We'll take another look at these leather seats, have really aggressive bolstering to them, very nice, they hug you well. And then up top, this does have a sunroof so we can open up the sunshade. You have all those controls up top along with some garage door buttons, the dome light switches, and you have a sunglass holder. Moving on to the back seats now, the door panels finish off just like up front with more of the leather and stitching. You have some room at the lower section of it. This is a five-seater sedan, so let's go ahead and hop in. Behind both front seats, you have a leather pocket here for anything that you need to place. There's two air vents in the center, and this does have heated rear seats, so you have two options on both sides, along with two USBs down in the middle. As far as legroom goes, I have the front seat set at my height, 5'10". You can see I have four or five inches in front of my knees and then two or three inches above my head. So it's actually pretty roomy. I can even stretch my legs out just a little bit more underneath the front seats. So you have plenty of room. You can recline just a little bit. I don't see any problem having two people next to me. Definitely plenty of room. In the middle seat here, we can pull this armrest down. It gives you two cup holders along with a little bit of storage space in the back side. We'll take a look at the visibility out of the back glass there. Along with the sides, you have another window in the back, which is very helpful to see. The back seats also have a 60-40 split to them, so just by pulling on this leather latch here, we can go ahead and fold the driver's side down so you can see how much room you have into the back area there. 
And then making our way to the trunk, we can either double tap the button on the key fob or push on this nicely hidden button right here. It will automatically open up. There's about 16 cubic feet of storage space with the back seats up and obviously much more with the back seats down. So you have plenty of room for anything that you need and I like how it extends both on the right side and the left side so you can store anything horizontally this way. And then up top we have a grab handle on the inside. We can go ahead and close it up. So getting the charger out on the road now, this is actually the first charger I've ever driven. I've been behind the wheel of a lot of Challengers, so to me everything is virtually identical. But I'm going to go ahead and change some of the settings here. I'm going to put the transmission into track mode. Traction control I'm going to keep in sport. When you put it into track mode, it takes off your traction control and stability control. So we're going to leave it in sport for today. Steering I'll go ahead and put into track mode and then we'll go ahead and shift it into manual mode. One thing that I've noticed too before I go ahead and give it a little bit of gas here is that you can toggle between manual mode and automatic mode just by holding the plus shifter for two seconds, two or three seconds I should say, it'll go over into drive and then if you hold on it again, it'll go back into manual mode. So you don't necessarily have to do that down on the stock or on the shifter itself, but from first gear here, nothing crazy. Man, it definitely gets up and moves, and I wasn't even close to half throttle there. And it sounds super good at the same time. I love that V8 rumble. Downshift. Plenty of power. Plenty of power to get out of that turn as well. This is definitely a fun sedan to drive. Oh, man. We'll downshift again here. Got some nice little twisty roads to test the handling. So with it back in normal driving mode, just giving it a little bit of gas, it still gets up and moves. But now moving on to more of the daily driving aspects, we'll talk about visibility. For a sedan like this, it's actually really easy to see all around. Forward facing visibility is great. You have thin A pillars, so you can even see on that passenger side there. And then a glance over your left and right shoulder. It's really easy to see over the left side. You can actually look out of the rear glass itself. And then over the right side, the pillar is not too large back there. So it gives you a great view. You can see on both sides of it. And then obviously use your side mirrors if you need to. Talking about comfort now, getting this seat adjusted to what I like, it's very easy to get it in the position that you're looking for. And these bolsters are huge. They come out almost larger than I am on each side. So they definitely hold you well. Just getting on it a little bit there. <laughs> Um, so they're, they're definitely very comfortable. They're gonna hold you well on back roads and taking some twisty turns. I like the position of the steering wheel. It has good notches on both sides. One thing that's kind of interesting too, I haven't been in too many vehicles that have kind of half paddle shifters and half hands-free controls. So on the top here, it's kind of weird. You can get a finger or two on the paddle shifter itself. And then you do have the radio volume adjustments. You can change the radio, turn it on and off and go between uh, AM, FMs, things like that on the bottom button. So it is kind of weird to get used to just having the shifters as the top half. <laughs> oh my gosh. And they're so responsive too. The minute you downshift, you're already in that next gear. Same with the upshifts. So talking about all the different driving modes, I kind of went over them in the beginning when I changed everything, but you do have street mode, sport mode, and track mode, along with launch control, which is currently unavailable. Obviously the car needs some time to break in before you can really step on it. And so it's really cool that from the factory, you pretty much have a track focused and track ready car. You have zero to 60 timers, zero to 100, the quarter mile, the eighth mile, you have a lot of technology features in this that are ready for the track. So basically once it's broken, you can use launch control, you can change everything, you can go to the drag strip. This is a really good bang for your buck, under 50,000, you have a track ready car, but you also have a family friendly vehicle at the same time. You can fit four other people in here 
and you have a large trunk space even with everybody in the cabin here so it's really a versatile vehicle all around so my overall thoughts getting behind the wheel of a charger i really like the driving seat here i like everything about this car so far it has a really aggressive hood bulge that is functional too so obviously you can get even more airflow to that v8 but it has a really aggressive appearance even from the driver's seat but it doesn't hinder your visibility at all it's not really bulky it doesn't stand up too high going into race options now something that i didn't find earlier you have line lock and launch control so obviously going to the drag strip you can use that you can activate your launch control and set it to the rpm that you would like to see so depending on what you'd like to launch from well i think that's going to wrap up with my walk around review and test drive in the 2019 dodge charger rt scat pack plus huge thanks again to benson chrysler jeep dodge and ram for providing this sedan for me today this is a really really cool sedan to drive i love everything about it it sounds super good in those downshifts as well but anyway if you guys enjoyed today's video make sure you give it a thumbs up smash that subscribe button and i'll see you in the next video